The first affirmation. I will live life to the fullest. I will live life to the fullest. Second affirmation. I will love all. I will love all. And the third affirmation. I will not worry. I will not worry. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for the inspiration that is given that these times where we hear your word, we will come away with three affirmations for our life to help us get through the week, to help us get through the difficult times. For we must affirm your presence in our lives, knowing that we are here for a reason. We just don't happen to be here. It's not about coincidence, it's about God's sequence. You're here for a reason and a purpose. And Lord, let that reason be that everyone here leaves with these affirmations to be able to see another day and have a good week. So remove me, dear God, if it's me that's an obstacle. Remove my voice, my presence, my hairstyle, whatever's going on. Move it from their eyes and their ears so that they will hear from you this day. This is our prayer. Amen. Live, love, don't worry. Live, love, don't worry. Wouldn't that be a great life if we would live and love and not worry? One of my favorite sayings is, if you worry, why pray? If you pray, why worry? If you worry, why pray? If you pray, why worry? Live life to the fullest. What's stopping you from doing something that someone will say, you're crazy to do that. Well, let them say it. Do it. So all you don't hurt yourself or others. Love all. Even those people that you know are talking about you. Love them. Live. Love. And don't worry. Our gospel lesson is all summed up in verse 36. When Jesus tell the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. Be not afraid, only believe. If you do not fear and you only believe, then guess what? You will live, love, and not worry. What's there to worry about anything? What can you change by worrying? Well, you can change a lot by worrying, can't you? You can get premature gray, amen? Oh, have mercy. You can worry yourself so you get what? Sleepless nights? You can worry yourself when you see somebody? Oh gosh, what are they saying about me now? You can worry yourself sick. You can bring on even more disease in your body because you're worrying about, Oh Lord, I'm sick. And what happens? You get more, 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 and more of the disease within you. You manifest this. I will tell you, there are times that people know that all of a sudden, you know, it's not just Henry. Sometimes it's me too. My back gives me the absolute blues. Dale tells me, stand up here, put your shoulders back. I tell her, don't you know it hurts? Yeah, I know it hurts. Put them shoulders back. But hear this gospel lesson. This, this is one of my favorite gospel stories. After landing from the Sea of Galilee, 
seeing the multitude of people gathered around, one of the rulers of the synagogue, hear this, you got to get this, one of the rulers of the synagogue, the same synagogue that would do what? In just a few days, turn around and do what? Call for Jesus' life. So here's the guy. Don't you think that Jesus doesn't know who this person is? Here is the guy, one of the rulers of the synagogue, who Jesus knows is going to call for his life, is going to plot against him, is going to help him and put him and nail him on the cross. This same guy. Jesus does not hesitate. He goes right to his house. And says, hey, I know you're getting ready to kill me. I know you don't really like me. But you know I know how selfish you are. You want to use me so I can heal what? Your daughter. So, you know... Ask me, you're going to turn around and ask for my life in a couple of days, but you're going to ask me to do something for you? What kind of love is that? It may be the greatest love of all. And that's what we must do. I am not kidding with you. We must love all. Even those persons who would have our life, we must love them. I hate to tell you this, I got a wake up call for each and every one of you. You're going to die. You are going to die. Don't believe it? Wait and see. But guess what? Christ overcame what? Death. You better love everybody. Even those people that will try to nail you to the cross. Live life to the fullest. Love all and do not worry. So here he was. He went over to Jairus' house. He healed the daughter. Oh, the daughter. Now, what was happening? What was going on here? One of the things is that we sometimes miss the story that was going on. Did you hear the story about all those people were sitting around there mourning and raising and doing all this other kind of stuff? It had to do with the fact that the guy was what? He was rich. And do you understand that the essence of this, people made a living by doing what? Coming over to your house to mourn. These were paid mourners. All right? So if you wanted to keep your job, what did you have to do? You had to mourn like nobody's business. Amen? So they will remember, oh yeah, I know that Reverend Carl Ross. Get him. He'll mourn like nobody's business. Yeah. Oh, Lord, he took my daughter. I can do it. I'm happy. Oh, Lord, he took my daughter. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. And guess what happens? Jesus comes in. Now what you going to do? Oh, shoot. There goes my job. But that's what happens. And then what I love... I mean, I mean, you got to think about this. I, I, I love this story. He still goes ahead and heals him. You know something? Don't let somebody stop you from being a blessing. Ooh, don't miss that one. Turn to your neighbor, look him in the eye, and tell them, you're not going to stop me from being a blessing. <laughs> oh yeah look in the mirror and say that I'm not going to stop me from being a blessing uh huh right but think about it somebody will give you a chance 
to have your blessings.